I call the meeting of the House Education Policy Committee to order. And we do have a quorum present. Our first order of business today is approving the minutes from Tuesday, March 14th. And uh, Representative Yuakim, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes? And if so, would you move the minutes from Tuesday? Yes, Madam Chair, I have, and I move the minutes for March 14th. All right, any discussion of the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and the minutes are approved. Uh, well, we do have an exciting um, bill to hear today, an important bill to hear, and um, it is House File 2685, oh, Representative Hornstein. <laughs> Representative Hornstein, uh, would you please make your way to the testimony table? And uh, members also, um, this is a, a significant bill that we're hearing today. I think we're going to hear an important presentation. We'll have some time for member discussion. But this is a bill that we're, we're, our intent is to lay it over for today, knowing that we still would be able to move it forward to education finance um, and that, that our schedule will permit it. Um, so um, what I give that is by way of introduction right now. And that you know, also we do have time. and so. Um, we are anxious and looking forward to hearing the testimony today um, for this important bill. Uh, Vice Chair Hill, would you like to motion House File 2685 before the committee to lay over for further consideration? Thank you, Chair. Yes, that'd be the motion. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome to the committee, Representative Hornstein. And before you introduce your bill, I do understand that you have an author's amendment that you'd like to offer to get into the shape that you prefer. Yes, I would like to move uh, the amendment. Um, and I believe uh, it's the A23 amendment. A23, yes, dash 0061. Right. And uh, I would like to uh, incorporate that to get it into the shape I'd like committee consideration. All right, Representative Hornston, I will move your A23 amendment before the committee um, to be added to your bill and get it in the shape that you would like. Any discussion of the A23 amendment? All right, seeing no further questions or discussions, let's move to adopt the A23 amendment, and this will be a voice vote. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, no. So the amendment is adopted, and I think that's how you would like to present the bill is with the A23 amendment. Correct. Thank um, you, Madam Chair. All right. Um, Representative well, Pornstein, please you. introduce yourself and proceed. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, members, I so appreciate your hearing this bill. Uh, and um, it is, as you said, Madam Chair, very, very important, particularly in the moment uh, that we live in. I want to just, by way of introduction, before I get into the substance of the, the bill and, and the amendment, just want to let the committee know this is a very personal issue for me. Um, I am the child of Holocaust survivors, and, um, you know, having grown up in, in our household, it's, it sensitized me not only to my own family's history, but the history of all people who have been impacted by genocide. And so that's why we have, uh, in this amendment, um, uh, we include uh, many of the, the, the genocides that we may be familiar with in, in world history, uh, including our own experience as we learned on Monday during Sovereignty Day of the, the uh, history and, and genocide of indigenous peoples here right in our country. Um, this is so important to me, even at an early age, that when I was an undergraduate student at McAllister College, I felt that it was so important for me to capture and to uh, learn from my parents who survived, uh, other relatives who have survived. And so I went and embarked on a, a, a project to do an oral history of my family's Holocaust survival experience. And so I have it here. Um, uh, many, many interviews with uh, my parents and surviving relatives, and I feel so uh, pleased that I was able to do this um, because now I've preserved these stories for my own children and generations uh, ahead of uh, generations behind. So I, I feel like um, you know these stories are so critical, and why this bill is especially important now uh, in terms of uh, Holocaust survivors is that many of our survivors are are older, and uh, we need to make sure that those stories are preserved, again, for the future generations. When we lose the witnesses, we lose a part of our own history. And so, um, members, um, I want to just talk about why this bill is so important, and then we have some testifiers. Uh, you know, national surveys demonstrate that those who study the Holocaust and genocide studies 
um, have more pluralistic attitudes and are more open to differing viewpoints of others. There's a greater willingness to challenge intolerant behavior in others and higher critical thinking skills and, and greater sense of civic and social responsibility. And so um, this bill, as I mentioned, the study of, of genocide studies in, in our schools, I think helps students counter hate and, and prejudice and equips educators to successfully teach uh, Minnesota's uh, new state social study standards and benchmarks. And so just to go through the bill very quickly, um, in section one, we have definitions of, of genocide uh, and some specific information about that. This definition came from scholars who you'll hear from in just a few minutes. Um, and they study the Holocaust, the genocide of, uh, of indigenous peoples and other genocides. In subdivision two, we have um, uh, the requirements that are aligned with uh, Minnesota's incoming K-12 social study standards and benchmarks. Um, and we have some uh, important additions uh, to those. Um, and then um, you know, we'll uh, uh, hear from some, some genocide experts again who will help, help us uh, understand better why this is so critical. Um, and then um, uh, we also have um, uh, a section where we uh, uh, create a task force to get into the, the real specifics of, of what this curriculum would look like. And again, we draw a very diverse set of um, voices in that task force. So I, I know there'll be some other um, uh, questions after our testify, but I just want to say that um, you know we want to focus on best practices. And some of those best practices include going uh, beyond the Holocaust to include the study of other genocides, closely align with state standards, create a diverse working group to help prepare teachers for success, and appropriate money for professional development. And we'll hear more about all of those things uh, from our very special set of testifiers. So Madam Chair, that is my overview of the bill. And uh, look forward to your questions and to the testimony. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Horstein. Uh, I have on my list first Joe Eggers, and if he can make his way up to the stand, we can begin our testimony. And as you sit, get yourself comfortable, get the mic ready for yourself, you can identify yourself and proceed. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the committee, my name is Joe Eggers. I am the interim director of the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at the University of Minnesota. Um, when Dr. Stephen Feinstein created our center back in 1997, it was amongst the first centers in the country dedicated to studying the Holocaust and other genocides. Dr. Feinstein envisioned a center that could nurture the needs of faculty and students across the University of Minnesota and respond to the growing needs and numbers of educators across the state and really the region uh, looking for resources for their classrooms. In that time, the center has become, uh, has remained at the forefront of preserving the memory uh, of genocide and raising awareness through the development of teaching resources and workshops. Throughout my near decade of working with the center, I've had the privilege of working with several communities whose stories have been shaped by genocide. A paramount concern of all of these communities is the desire to teach fellow Minnesotans their stories. And one community leader told me, genocide is woven into the fabric of Minnesota. And he's right. Over the last five decades, tens of thousands of foreign born people have found a safe home in Minnesota after fleeing their homelands in the wake of violence and even genocide. Since the 1970s, Khmer, Hmong, Somali, Bosniak, and more recently, Ukrainians have all found sanctuary in our state. These numbers don't factor in groups like the Armenians, Jews, and the other earlier waves of Ukrainians who came to Minnesota in the early 20th century in the face of persecution and violence. It also doesn't include Minnesota's indigenous nations who've routinely been subjected to genocidal policies in the state since the first treaty in 1805. And our teachers speak to this need. At one of our workshops, I was asked by an educator, these students are in my classes. How can I possibly tell them their story? This question is, is supported by surveys we've done 
with educators that point to the lack of resources as the primary reason teachers give for not including the Holocaust or other genocides in their curriculum. Nearly every respondent says including these topics is important to them, yet less than half spend any time on the Holocaust. That number drops significantly when we factor in other genocides. As it stands now, indigenous genocide is the second most taught genocide in Minnesota. Nearly a third of Minnesota educators who teach about genocide are teaching about the experience of the state's native communities, and that number continues to grow. It's important uh, that we support our teachers by providing them with resources and access to professional development to teach the genocide of indigenous people. This bill does that. Like many other communities in Minnesota's multicultural fabric, indigenous students are in our classrooms across the state. More than half of Minnesota's indigenous population lives right here in the Twin Cities metropolitan area. As my colleague, Dr. Gabrielle Spears Rico, who we worked closely with in drafting critical portions of the spill, shares in her statement, it's important that our indigenous children see themselves in curriculum and for all children to learn about how colonialism impacted indigenous people of the Americas. Such education helps counter stereotypes that plague indigenous representation caused by the complete erasure of our history in schools. It is particularly important to include the Dakota genocide as well as the Ojibwe and Ho-Chunk uh, dispossession that took place all of which involved mass deportations of American Indian people from within and outside the state. Events such as the imprisonment of Dakota people at Fort Snelling and their expulsion to Camp Davenport, Iowa, should be acknowledged and taught so that moving forward, we can move toward reconciliation and towards building a future that is inclusive of the interests and wellness of indigenous people while working with our tribal nations. It's important to remember that just six years ago, the attack on Nuom, the infamous painting by German artist Anton Gag, was removed from this building after nearly a century of exhibition. The painting, which presented a portrayal of the 1862's, one of 1862's most pivotal events, uh, was one of the only representations of indigeneity in Minnesota's Capitol building. It typifies the need for increased education of the genocide of native nations. Because of that, it's also important to point out that if this bill is passed, the language before you would be the first to include indigenous genocide in state statute. As a Minnesotan, it is empowering to see our state take this momentous first step. Members of the committee, we cannot escape the legacies of genocide, but we can better equip teachers to address it in their classrooms. A policy that ensures Holocaust and genocide are incorporated in middle and high school is an important first step, but providing funding that supports the development of new resources is critical. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the testimony. Thank you for our brief history lesson and enriching our understanding. I see Laura Zelli as our next to testify. Uh, no, I think Laura, but you should And please identify yourself, identify yourself and proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Laura Zell. Uh, I am a child of a Holocaust survivor, a former St. Paul public school teacher, and currently Director of Holocaust Education at the Jewish Community Relations Council of Minnesota and the Dakotas. Um, it is my honor to be here today and um, to talk with all of you. I have made it my professional and personal obligation to ensure that instruction on the Holocaust is taught in an educationally sound way. Centering the complexity of this history is essential as it creates opportunities for students to develop higher critical thinking skills accurately interpret history and develop a greater sense of civic social responsibility. These are not easy topics to understand and these are not easy topics to teach and they often bring up more questions than answers. The Holocaust was an unprecedented attempt to murder all European Jews and thus extinguish an entire culture. It fundamentally challenged the foundation of human values institutions and systems that were supposed to protect citizens and uphold democracy failed during the Holocaust. 
Examining this history can illustrate the roles of historical, social, religious, political, and economic factors in the collapse of these democratic values and human rights. It can prompt our students to develop an understanding of the mechanisms and processes that lead to genocide. A vital portion of this bill supports funding for teacher training. This is incredibly necessary. Those of us who are not in the classroom cannot assume that teachers have the time, the expertise, or the funds to effectively, effectively teach these histories without our support. As a former classroom teacher, I paid for my own professional development, spent many hours learning the subjects I was to teach, and that would often change from year to year. I'm fortunate today to meet and train teachers from across the country, including many in Minnesota. They have told me that through quality professional development and curated resources, not just a list of links from a museum or a list of links from an archive, that they would be able to feel more confident teaching these subjects and they know they can do it well with support. This bill doesn't ask them to do more or to figure it out by themselves. It equips teachers to successfully teach to the new, the new state social studies standards by establishing the task force that will be experts, teachers, students, and community members to build this repository of resources and help allocate grant money to teachers to further their learning. As my mother became a citizen and built her life in Minnesota after the war, she used to tell me that if more people had spoken up during the Holocaust, my grandfather and other relatives would not have died at Auschwitz. She used to ask me, where were the voices of reason? I know firsthand the dangers of remaining silent and indifferent in the face of oppression of others. And I personally have also seen the power of good teaching and the magic that can take place in a classroom. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story and your family's history. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Max Walstein. And as you settle in, when you're ready, please identify yourself and proceed. Madam Chair and members, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Maxwell Walstein, and I'm a freshman at Wazetta High School. In sixth grade, I wrote a research paper on the Holocaust for my English class, and that inspired me to learn more on the subject. I'm Jewish. My grandparents' families were greatly impacted by the Holocaust and violence towards Jews in Europe. After more research, I realized just how important the act of learning about the atrocities that occurred was, and so that no one would ever have to live through that again. In February 2020, I started a petition on change.org to ensure that Holocaust education would be standardized in the state of Minnesota. And that petition gathered around 1,600 signatures in one month. My school does teach about the Holocaust, but up to this point, I've, I've only learned about it in seventh grade. And it was a very limited um, curriculum at that. What further confounded me was that kids at my school were not understanding of what had happened, of how just horrible the events were. The Holocaust is one of the most denied events in history, and that denial goes on to fuel anti-Semitism, which has been on the rise for years. When you look at the Twin Cities, we've had painful anti-Jewish incidents at even local high schools. Holocaust denial, downplay or denial, whether it is intentional or not, severely hurts the Jewish people. And the best way to combat it is widespread common knowledge of what transpired. There are a lot of important things that students need to learn in school about history and civics, but we need to prioritize teaching about the Holocaust to ensure that it never occurs again. Thank you. Thank you. And we do have a, a final testifier to come before us. And that would be uh, Dora Zayden Wedberg. <laughs> Thank you. 
My name is Dora Zeitner Weber, and this is my daughter, Roseanne. I am a survivor of the Holocaust. I came to the United States in 1950. At the, at the, I, I, I was born in Poland in 1924. When I was in 1939, when the German uh, uh, the German nation embarks on the on the murder of six million of my people, including most of my mem of my family, the only survivors at the time were my parents and my and myself and um, your brother and my brother uh, when we were privileged to come to the United States most people were not quite believing that this could have happened to us and they certainly didn't believe, as we pleaded, that it could happen here, because when there is a diverse population, uh, as the United States, and especially Minnesota, uh, which we are mostly interested in right now, although I plead for, enti for the entire United States, of the, the uh, population of Minnesota now is much, much more diverse. And I would say that the lack of understanding of this w diversity is a danger. And that it is very important to know to us when we came here to education, to attain an education was the first thing that we had to strive for because we were deprived of it for so many years. And today, when people are deprived of education, they absolutely have no access to a life that's better than they than what they have. I plead that you, um, you and uh, that there be a uh, over the years. I must say, I did work very hard, um, and we had uh, many times uh, issued um, issued requests and even uh, uh, um, rec uh, actual uh, 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 there were there were times when there were mandates to uh, uh, teach uh, the Holocaust in colleges, state colleges, and in universities. But it usually ended up without anybody noticing even that it disappeared and just became the mandate of the institution. Uh, we need a requirement we need a requirement that not only all students, but everybody, everybody in Minnesota educated should have a, a knowledge of the dangers of what murder, mur mass murder can have, that mass murder can happen and that people have to understand, to learn to live with each other. 
And that is only through understanding and through education so that they know who their neighbors are, who the people are that they're living with and have to learn to live with them. So we don't applause in committee, but I understand that all of us are inside applauding right now and truly grateful for this honor of hearing this testimony and being in the presence. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're good. <laughs> And we'll have Representative Hornstein return <laughs> to the table and take us to the next step, which is, I guess at this point, the discussion of the bill. Any um, words to conclude our testimony part? Well, thank you. I, I want to thank uh, Dora Zeidenweber for that very moving testimony. And um, I feel that uh, as a witness, she has so much wisdom to share with us. And I thank you so much. As a child of survivors, I thank you. Um, I'll just simply conclude. Um, I, I could read some stories from my family, but I, I just want to let you share one with you. Um, and that is from my mother uh, when she was in hospice. Uh, my uh, parents, my mother was also from Poland, from Lvov, which is now Lviv in Ukraine. Uh, my father was from Hungary. Uh, they met in a train going to a displaced persons camp in Germany after the war. Uh, I lost both sets of my grandparents on, on both sides of my family. Um, and so when my mother was uh, in hospice, um, you know, I did ask her, um, you know, in, in the Jewish community we have a charity, it's called Sadaka, which is literally justice. And I asked her, do you have a, a cause or someplace we could give Sadaka? Uh, in your name, and she said, no, give it to elderly Holocaust survivors because they, they are struggling. And you know what else you could do, Frank? It means so much to me if uh, you, we as survivors, that we could educate the broader community and the Jewish community about what happened. So can you put a, a program in my name at our synagogue, a Holocaust memorial lecture in my name? That was her last wish. And I feel like in many ways, he, me being here today and carrying this bill, I'm, I'm carrying on my mother's wish to all of you. Thank you. Representative Feist. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to thank Representative Hornstein for bringing this bill. Um, I, I grew up in Hebrew school. We, we learned about the Holocaust growing up, and I'm really interested in the studies that show that learning about Holocaust and genocides um, kind of promote civic engagement and empathy. Um, I don't think it's an accident that I grew up to want to be an immigration attorney or that Roseanne grew up and wanted to be an immigration attorney. Um, uh, I think that it really stems from, from learning about the Holocaust from an early age and, and developing that sense of empathy and, and vigilance. Um, at, at the Holocaust Museum, um, when I toured it, I assume it's still there, at the end there's a room where you can look at you, you've, how to apply all you've learned to help um, address potential genocide uh, elsewhere in the world. And I thought that that was very important, that it's not just an exercise just for the sake of it. It's how can we apply this wisdom to help others? Um, and so that was what I wanted to say. Just thank you so much for all of your work on this. Um, I think this amendment expanding it and um, really looking at all genocides um, is very important. So thank you. Representative Yuki. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Representative Hornstein, for the amendment and really expanding this. As uh, Representative Feist said, I only have I only had one other suggestion, and I'm not sure if you've spoken with the um, the Tribal Nations Education Committee. I know on lines 4.3 of the amendment, you say at least three representatives from Minnesota-based nonprofit organizations, and you uh, you put community groups, and then you add the sovereign nations in there. But because you really do speak to um, our indigenous people quite frequently in the bill itself, I would really strongly suggest um, seeing if uh, TNEC 
wants to be considered as having one person on the working group apart from that just kind of being lumped in together as one of the three. I don't know if you've had conversations with them yet. They're really kind of our go-to for um, Indigenous studies. Representative Hornstein. Um, thank you very much, um, and Madam Chair, uh, Chair Joachim. Yes, uh, I had some conversations uh, prior, uh, during the bill's development, but uh, particularly on Monday um, with the Minnesota Indian Education Council and uh, several of the tribal leaders that were here. And I, that is an excellent suggestion. And you know, they were uniformly uh, interested in this, supportive of this. Um, I think they felt that in many ways their history was erased and, uh, and, and that this was very critical to them. So I will, uh, you know, we, we, there, we could do it as a, I'll consult with uh, some of the uh, others who are involved in this bill, but I'm very open to doing this. And uh, either now or at the next committee stop, we could incorporate that. Thank you. Uh, follow up, Representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, the next committee stop is our Education Finance Committee, Good. so that Good. would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Madam Chair, I will say on the record uh, that we will uh, follow the Chair's advice. All right. Madam, Madam Chair, I was yes. just going to finish. Um, uh, TNAC might be the perfect place to go just because they do have 14 members, I believe. So they'll be able to maybe have the capacity to, to appoint someone. I know they're spread thin, but thank you. That is an excellent suggestion, and I would welcome their participation in the task force. Thank you. <clears throat> Representative Brooke. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the author for uh, bringing this bill forward. You and I talked about this quite a bit. Um, but I want to make sure that we don't miss the importance of the content of this bill. When I was in fifth grade, I learned just a little smidge about World War II in history class, um, but I was fascinated by it. So I can remember going to the library and reading anything I could find um, from Cory Ten Boom and In the Hiding Place and of course Anne Frank and book after book on this. Um, I've been to the Holocaust Museum twice in DC, once with myself, once taking my family so I could expose my kiddos to that. I um, mean, going into the room with the flame and standing there, which it gives you time to reflect in silence and, and to cry. Um, and then this last summer when I was in Germany uh, with our group for the climate summit, we, uh, when we came to Berlin, we took a moment to go into the Holocaust Memorial. And for me, it was at dusk. And so you walk in, and for those that don't know, it's a series of tall, um, varying sizes of stone, stone structures. And when you look at it, it looks fairly simple. When you begin to enter it, it becomes so much more um, obvious that these are these looming structures. Um, and the deeper you go, sort of the more lost in the... Um, severity of what was experienced um, becomes more obvious. And as I went through, because it was at sunset, it got darker and darker the more that I, I wound my way through this almost maze. Um, and it was such um, a sort of metaphor for what had been experienced to be going you know, into this place where you could get lost in darkness. But then you came out, and you came back out into the light, so to speak. But the reason that I share this with you, and the reason that I think this bill is so important, is because I'm very fortunate and very privileged to have been able to go to those places and to experience it. But for our students and our family that won't ever have the opportunity to experience that, Something like this, where they can learn about it in school, very targeted learning, not just a, a moment here and there in history class throughout the, their educational experience, but really learn about this creates the empathy that Representative Feist was talking about and fosters the curiosity. And we've talked about this with the ethnic studies bills and other bills, that what we're trying to do is to expose our students to experiences that are not like their own, to cultures that are not like their own, in the hopes of making um, progress towards um, better interactions and less racism and less hate and less fear, because you fear what you don't understand. 
Um, and, and just one last point, I really appreciate the amendment because I've, I've said this here before, uh, I, most of us in this room, I hope, um, learned about the genocide and near extinction of our native um, indigenous communities. Um, and I knew this growing up in my education, but it wasn't until last session when I started hearing bills that were brought, for, brought forth that I really understood about boarding schools. And to be nearly 50 years old and just be le learning about the horror of, of boarding schools, that's a fail. That is a huge failure from our education system. And so through a bill like this, especially with the amendment to include the other geno genocides that we know of and that we have the opportunity to then explore in more detail is critical moving forward for how we want this world to be for the next generation. So thank you, Rep Hornstein, for bringing this. Thank you for your amendment. And thank you so much to the testifiers, including our student over here, that were willing to share what this means to them. Representative Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Chair Hornstein, for, for bringing this bill before us. Um, I also want to, to thank you for um, the, the amendment. I know we've had conversations, and I really appreciated you reaching out and making sure that the bill was reflective of um, all of the diaspora communities that have made Minnesota home, um, you know, including folks from the former Yugoslav and um, you know, parts, of, parts of Asia. So I appreciate that. Um, and I also wanted to amplify something from Mr. Wallstein's testimony about the um, uh, recent rise in anti-Semitism and just uh, really, um, really hate crimes across the country. And so really appreciate this proposal at this time. It is very timely um, as someone who also studied why civil wars and civil conflicts break out. Um, I'm very concerned about the rhetoric, uh, you know, here in our country and also around the world. And so um, appreciate you bringing forward this idea, which is so important because I also believe uh, like Rep Berg and others that um, the more we know, the better we can be. And so um, thank you and thank you to your testifiers today. Thank you. Representative Berg all. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Representative Hornstein. Uh, thank you for bringing this forward. It's important to shine the light of history on this very tragic event. Thank you. Representative Mueller. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Hornstein. Um, like Representative Berg, I also have a, a story of when I got to first experience this. That um, I was an exchange student and had an opportunity to go to Germany. And um, I hate using the word tour because it makes it trivialized, but to uh, tour um, Dachau. And um, as a almost senior in high school, that was um, an overwhelming experience that to this day, I don't know if I really understand. Um, to see pictures, to see the amount of shoes and glasses and all of those things that were collected. Um, um, as a 17 year old, you can't comprehend and even now, I'm still, um, I still think about that often. It was frustrating to me as my, stu as my, um, as my uh, uh, classmates would go around and, and look at this and they would take pictures and I just, taking pictures of it seemed to disrespect it. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do that. And um, so thank you for this bill. I'm hoping that um, as a person who got a chance to teach Anne Frank and uh, as, a, as a teacher, and um, also I was able to teach the Eli Wiesel memoir several times, I know the impact that it has on our students when they're able to um, really have um, trained adults to walk them through something like this. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I do appreciate the comments um, from our committee members. And you, I think you understand that we were all listening um, intently and experiencing this again um, today. Um, and I also appreciate uh, the bill author and the work that's been done that 
we try to bring together all of these experiences as we know here in the Minnesota House because we've heard from our fellow members about the genocides that are here in Minnesota and that, um, that just as people can go to Germany and, and understand that that history is there to, um, to, to, to continue to teach and that's, that they're in, with a physical presence, um, that I think what we're talking about and what you're proposing in this bill is that, and as our, our testifier said too, um, Ms. Z um, Z Z Z Z Z Zeidwender, I know I didn't say it quite the way that she said it before, and I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't learn Polish early in life, and I don't think I'll get it now. <laughs> um, that, that we need to know each other, because we are a diverse state, and we need to know each other's histories. And I, and I think that's the intent of this piece of legislation and its intent of other legislation and bills that we brought forward is to make sure that we are teaching this whole history to our Minnesota students uh, because there are, um, there are, there's human tragedies and horrific um, atrocities that cannot be, happen again. And I know that that's the intent of what we're talking about today. And the intent of, I think, of the legislature going forward is, is you know, how we can use education as a tool to prevent this. So, um, closing remarks for well, Senate Well, uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you to the, to the members uh, who listened and, and to, to listen especially to Dora Zeidenweber and her story and, and her power. Um, and I, I want to agree with so many of you that um, members that had talked about uh, you know, how important this is and, and, and how it's affected you personally and in your lives. And I thought, Madam Chair, you said it best here at the end that um, we are one Minnesota community and so we, we, we have a Cambodian community. We have people from the former Yugoslavia living here. We have Armenians, we have Ukrainians. Uh, the indigenous genocide is right here, took place. We had uh, the, the, the so much, so many uh, instances here uh, in Mankato, the hanging. Um, uh, so I think that, um, you know, this is a, a way to bring people together, to honor the memory of our ancestors, and to look to a future where, um, you know, uh, we can live, live together and, and understand uh, the importance of uh, combating hate together uh, so that we can have a brighter future, all of us here in Minnesota. Thank you. And now we get back to you're at the House of Representatives. And with that, um, I, re I renew uh, Representative Hill's motion to lay over um, House file uh, 2685. And thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you again, members, for uh, your, your attention and your interest. As amended. <laughs> yeah. Right, that as amended is so important. <laughs> Did I move it to finance? Oh, are we moving it to, are we, yeah. we are, okay, we Manager, changed yes, with, yeah, it's with the amendment, I thought. With, with the amendment, Sorry. you know, and, and I, I, we were having a moment of, uh, of confusion here, and I apologize for that, but we will move it, we will move it to education finance. As amended. Yes. As amended, yes. I think we, we, we have a good understanding. Uh, so as amended, we are moving it to education finance. <coughs> And we're going to take a vote on that. I, sorry. <laughs> sorry, committee. The original motion was to lay it over. Okay. Um, My fault. I and, <laughs> and, um, but, uh, you know, I think that I've heard this discussion, and especially the discussion of um, the, an acceptance of, an, of, of a friendly amendment um, before we move on to the next committee. So um, we're going to start over and with our motion right now. Um, and so I would entertain a, t a motion at this point to, uh, from Representative Hill, to move House File 2685 to Education Finance as amended. So moved. All right. That is our motion in front of us now. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving to Education Finance. Thank you. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Chair members. And we do have one more bill today. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll wait a couple minutes. We'll wait a couple minutes.
a slight bust. The door of a door. Is it not? Thank you so much. <laughs>Right, members. Our final bill today is House File 2206. Um, and um, I think that this, my understanding is we have some procedures that we're going to work through here to, um, to get our bill numbers in, in the, in the, in the um, shape that we want them to yes. be. All right. So, um, Representative Erdahl, would you like to uh, move House File um, 2206 in front of us? Should I move the amendment first or? Um, the bill first. Well, we'll move the move the bill and move the amendment, which is the DE2 amendment. I'll, I'll, I will move the bill first then. Yep. And then would you like to move the DE2 amendment? And now I'll move the DE2 amendment. All right. Any, this is to, it's it's to make the bill, the bill right. that uh, Representative Erdahl would like in front right. of us right now. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. This, uh, the amendment replaces the bill language with language from the omnibus bill that was passed from this committee last week. All right. And, uh. To explain then, um, I've already done a, a presentation on, on civics, uh, actually many times. Uh, if you want me to do it again, just raise your hands. <laughs> I was going to say it never gets old, but you know, maybe. <laughs> we could get out early. I hear yeah, that it's nice outside. <laughs> so th this is mainly procedural. I need to do this to establish a companion bill for Senator Swadzinski's bill. Uh, basically, for some mix-up, we introduced bills on the same topic but different and I, I need to to match up the numbers which is is what this does and essentially some of the things that uh, I believe are more onerous to some folks uh, are in the other bill and uh, this bill uh, I'm sure will receive much more support and that's why I've done it this way all right <laughs> all right uh any discussions or questions on the DE2 amendment? All right, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? 
the DE2 amendment is adopted. So we now have the bill before us um, as amended. Um, and <coughs> I think our, our, our motion then would be to lay it over for, it's already included, but now we have it in the bill number that we right. want that'll be sitting here in the committee waiting to be picked up at any moment, I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you. That, that's all I, all I need. All right. Um, just a, a few things that I think needed to be done, and mm -hmm. that's what's happened. All right, discussion of the bill as amended. Sorry, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just looking at the at the agenda. At first, it said education finance, why, or but why why is this uh, on the agenda? It says it's referring to education finance, and um, and I was just talking with the with uh, Mr. Withers. Why is this not going to the general register? Um, I think that we're we're fine with. Um, holding it here, and it, we do have the language moving forward. <coughs> okay. That's fine with me. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Rodo. So that's basically all I've got. All right. Unless you want more. I can do more. We can, we can, we've got time. We, we have the room. <laughs> uh, see, see no more discussion. Um, Representative, Representative Rodo renews his motion to lay over House file 2206 as amended uh, for pop for it's already included in our education uh, policy bill that moved forward. All right. um, but thank you, Representative Erdahl. Thank you. All right. Um, having no more business before us today, meeting is adjourned.